Okay, when we deal with the real world application, we can take a look on one example, which is never. So in the never news, uh, I'm not sure if you're using never, but I think most of you use never. Yeah, so in the never news, you can see the personalized news article. So yeah, this is the article for you. Yeah. And also they have a column, yeah, a column for the recommender system. For example, if you like this news, then you might like this column or you might like this reporter. Yeah. And sometimes also there will be some category. So in the category means something related on the particular category like economic or maybe specifically for uh, social or international and so on. Yeah. So how the neighbor can do this one? So based on some research, you can take a look on this article. Yeah. They use the tensor factorization. So what we learned before, we learned about matrix factorization. So matrix factorization, it means we have two attributes, two factors, user and matrix, uh, user and item. But for the tensor, it will be more than two. So you can look at the user versus the news and context. So we will learn in the chapter after the mid exam, there is a context space recommender system. So in the neighbor news, they try to represent the user click on the news and in context C. So in short term, build a reader profile based on the sequence of click and unclick news items. So in the long term, there will be some user relevant scores. We can personalize the attractiveness measures between a user and a candidate news article to be recommended. And some other factors, for example, the context. Maybe if I look at the economic news, it will be always in the morning. If I look at the sport news, it will be in the evening. And if it is now in the morning, then I will recommend news related to economy. Or location. Because now I'm in Korea, then all news in Korea will be shown. But when I go to another countries, let's say I go to Japan, then maybe news related to Japan will appear. Or the quality of the image associated with the news item. Sometimes it is also affect the personalization. It's popularity trend. So if the news is popular, then it might be uh, an item that can be recommended. Or a collection of same or related event. So if now uh, most of the cities have the fall season. Okay, so they have the event for fall season. Maybe we know in Seoul there will be fireworks, in Yongin there will be a lot of festivals. So those kind of things will appear in the news. Then it is the personalization. So the idea is using the user history, whether it is short or medium or long term. And they can use the attention mechanism. We will uh, learn later about the attention mechanism, if there are some times, okay, to capture the flexible temporal dependency. So for example, we want to capture the periodic reading patterns. Reading at the football result every Monday morning. Then if there is a pattern like this one, then the news will appear every Monday morning about the football result. Or serendipitous navigation. 
so as assessing an event related to an article so an an event means yeah like what i mentioned to you to these days there will be a lot of fall festival then if it is related to one article then it can be connected to the user but the problem that the neighbor address still they have some bias so the position bias means higher rank item is more often clicked on even when several news items are equally relevant. The higher rank item means the when we have the recommendation, usually we cannot just recommend only one. We will recommend like top N items, maybe top 10 highest probabilities. Or we can also have top N higher rank item. So the higher rank item is more often clicked, even several news items are equally relevant. So it is bias on the position or the trust bias. People click the top item because they trust the system. So many people just trust with the recommender system and then they click. Okay, in that case, yeah, we have the trust bias. So still there are so many issues and I think it is the starting point of you to think about your team project. Okay. So one application is like this news or you can try to think what will be the best for your team project. I give you one example of Google Collab so you can take a look. Okay, let me explain this Google Collab. I just make a simple uh, code. I think I hope that you already know Python. Okay, I don't need to teach you Python. So we use the library like NumPy, Pandas, Escalon, Matplotlib, Seaborn. Okay, this is the basic uh, library. And let me use the data set from this site. This is about rating. So this rating, yeah, if you look at the first five data, we have user ID, movie ID, and the rating. So this is the data that I show you at the second week of our lecture. So this is user, this is item, and this is the rating. Timestamp means the time when this user give the rating on this item. If we want to look at the movie information, uh, there is another data set we call it movie.csv so the movie id one it is the title of toy story and then there is a genre genre means what is the type of the movie the toy story is an adventure movie animation it is for children comedy and fantasy Jumanji in 1995, it is about adventure, children, and fantasy. So we can take a look the basic information of the data. So how many ratings are available? So in the rating, uh, we have 100,000 data. And we want to know how many unique movies. There are 9,000 unique movies. And how many unique users? Okay, there are 600 unique users. Then we can also check how many, uh, what is the average rating per user? 
because not all user give the rating. So if you look at this number, if we have a matrix, if we have a matrix of 610 users with 9,724 movies, actually, we need to get 5 million, yeah, 5.9 million something of rating. However, we only have 100,000 of rating. So it means there are many missing value. There are many ratings which is zero, or there are many ratings which is not available. Okay, then you know, we can try to figure out how many uh, ratings given by a particular user. For example, I want to know the user frequency on the particular item. So I want to look at the rating database. So the user and the movie IDs Let's group by. And then I want to know how many rated items from a particular user. In this case, okay, so the user one gave 232 ratings. User two gave 29 ratings. User three gave 39 ratings, and so on. Then you can see that yeah, many users, maybe they still do not watch the movie. So there are 9,000 movies. There are 9,000 movies, but the user ID, he watched 200 movies. This user only watched 29 movies. Yeah, we can do the rating analysis. Let's say we can uh, look at the movie. And I want to know what is the rating of particular movie. For example, movie ID 1, the rating is 3.9. Movie ID 2, the rating is 3.4, and so on. And we can also look at some particular information. The lowest rated movie. The lowest rated movie is, okay, this one. And then the highest rated movie. This is the highest rated movie. And I want to know how many people who give the highest rated movie. Okay, in this case, there are two users give the highest rated movie in this particular movie. And we want to know how many people who give the low rating movie. Okay, in this case, only one user move. The rating is 0 0.5. So this particular statistic will be needed for the first time to understand the data set. So we can yeah, calculate like the probability. Okay. What is the mean? Okay. So we can use some kind of uh, average based on the particular number of rating. So it means I want to group by the movie. I want to group by based on the movie ID. And then I want to look at the rating and check how many times. The movie has been rated, and what is the mean of that rating? Okay. So I know that the movie one, there are 215 people who watch the movie, and then the rating is 3.9. There are 110 users who watch the movie two, and the uh, rating average is 3.4, and so on. So we can 
create the user item matrix. So the user item matrix means we have the matrix. This is the user. This is the item. So you can easily later look at this kind of information in a matrix. There are some ways to calculate this user item matrix. Uh, we can use the compressed sparse row matrix. This is one of the library in the SciPy. So I'm just using the CSR matrix. This is the compressed sparse row matrix. The idea is we want to look at the N and M. So I want to get the unique users and the unique movie. As you know, when we create the, the matrix, so we need to know how many users and how many item. Then we, know, we need to know the unique number. After we know the unique number of those, then we can create this map okay, based on the user ID. And we can map this item based on the movie ID. So we just make those into a list. And then we will just need to make the, after we have this index, we just need to map those index into the particular ID. So if this is index one, then it is the ID user ID one. If it is index two, then this is the user ID two and so on. Then we will have the user index and movie index. In that case, we can just make the X, which is the matrix from the movie index and the user index and the value for each of the cell will be the rating. So this is the way to create the CSR or the compressed sparse row matrix. And then we can just apply with the algorithm. For example, uh, in the algorithm, we apply the nearest neighbor. So in the nearest neighbor, we can find the similar the similarity of the movie or the similarity of the users. So we can use the library nearest neighbors. Did I run this? I didn't run this one and then let me run this. So in order to find the similar movies, um, we can just define the parameter. Let's say I want to find what is the current movie ID and then what is the matrix and then K. K means how many neighbors that I want to check. So if in the example, let's say we want to find two neighbors, then yeah, we can define K equals to two. What is the matrix? So let's say the matrix is using the cosine similarity. And I want to show the distance or not. So if it is false, then I will not show the distance. Then let's check the neighbor ID. Let's make it as blank at the first. And then I will map the movie ID into the movie index. And then I will make a factor based on the matrix X of a particular index. So I will check the K. So K means it is uh, the nearest neighbor. The N nearest neighbor K equals to uh, the nearest neighbor is K. And then the algorithm, yeah, you can define the algorithm. There are some uh, ways to do with the nearest neighbor. One of them is brute. Brute means brute force. 
means you will check all the possible bleeding. If there are so many data in your data set, of course, it will be long, it, it will take a long time. Okay. And then we will fit with the X, and then yeah, we will check the factor. And we want to make it like normalize. So we want to reshape it with the one until minus one. And then yeah, we will check what is the neighbor. The neighbor means the item which is the nearest based on this KNN. And we just make a loop from zero until K and check the nearest neighbor of I. Okay, so this is the I is the item. And when we know this item, okay, so we put it into a list. Okay, this is the empty list. So we put this movie into this list. So we will check what is the nearest movie based on the information given in the parameter. Okay, then I want to know uh, the information later about the title. So let's say I want to check based on the movie tree. Okay. Based on the movie tree, I want to find the similar movie. So I want to find the similar movie based on the given matrix. So I have the movie ID, which is tree, and then check what would be the similar matrix of this movie. So the movie ID three is this one, Grumpier Old Man. And based on this information, okay, those are the similar movies. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So there are ten. Okay. So K equals to ten. So we want to select ten similar movies from three given the matrix X. Now, if I want to recommend the movies based on the user preference, okay, so the first is the similarity based on the items. And if I want to recommend movies based on the user preference, so I have the user ID. What is the user ID that we want to use? And the X is the matrix, and we have the user mapper and the movie mapper. And we have the movie inverse mapper, and then how big is the K or the nearest neighbor? So in this case, <clears throat> yeah, we still use the rating, and I want to check only the user's ID. Okay, and then if it is empty, of course we can set the, the information that the user does not exist. <clears throat> and then you will check. What is the movie ID and what is the title that the user give on the ratings? And then let's check the similar ID and let's check <clears throat> the movie title. If the movie is not available, we just put the if. Okay. If the movie is available, then we will check what is the similar ID of that particular movie. Then yeah, we can use this one. <clears throat> Since uh, we want to check based on the user ID 150. So you can change with other user. This is just for example. If I look at the user 150, then I want to recommend the use user. So what are the recommended movie for this user? Okay. Since the users watch the, this movie, and he gave this movie with a high rating, okay. with a high rating, and he would be, uh, he would like the other kind of movie, that is this K equals to 10. So K equals to 10, so the other 10 movies that might be 
possible for him to watch. So yeah, this is just another example. If I put another user ID, which is not available, okay, and then we cannot recommend any movies if the user is not available. Okay. So um, that's the thing about the collaborative filtering, and you already know about the 